as well, but I've known Steve for some years now, so this this works, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have a door that is really annoying over here. Uh, I've known Steve for some years, met him at some conferences, um, and uh, even nicer was the uh, when I was in Las Vegas, is it two years ago at the conference? Yes. Went on a road trip, me and him and two other uh, well visionaries. So me and me and Steve are only ambassadors. So we are lowly, like, so, lowly ambassadors. Yeah, but we had a really nice drive to Grand Canyon. Uh, four old men listening to rock and roll for many many hours, driving back and forth <laughs> in Vegas, and they went to the casino in the evening. That was that was also fun. Especially for the German who never been to a casino and won a lot of money. Uh, I lost all my money. Steve, anything to add? You're from Birmingham, right? I, I'm from Birmingham in the United Kingdom, which is the origination of the American Birmingham, which is in Alabama. Um, I always like to refer to it as the real Birmingham. Um, my, my sincere apologies for my lack of Norwegian. But I, I do the know. Home city of Black Sabbath, is it? <laughs> I, I, even though I couldn't understand a word of Tor's um, introduction, mm -hmm. I do know that he was probably rude about me because he normally is. So, so today so, I'm going to present. Yeah, Shall I start now, Tor? Are you, are you good where you yeah. are? I'm going to mute myself. Good okay. Luck. Thank you. Um, today I'm going to talk about Steal Like an Artist, which is actually a phrase coined by an artist called Austin Cleon, who uh, was referring to the fact that uh, nothing really is brand new. We're all building upon what we've seen or what we've uh, done before. Um, but of course, it's still very important to accredit the work that you're um, using material from. But stealing like an artist, uh, why do we care? Well, we, we care in this community if we are busy and we are busy professionals um, because we want to make sure that we are getting things done as quickly as possible. But we also want to be thinking about the quality of what we're doing and the experience that our users are getting at the same time as well. OK, I have no idea where that animation came from. I do apologize. Um, so another way to put this particular workshop or training or webinar session. It comes from my training program and it's about using charts for templates um, and we're using them to still like an artist to deliver better dashboards. And it's part two and you'll see why it's part two in a moment. So I'm Steve Adams. I've been using Tableau since about 2014. It's coming on to 10 years, which is kind of scary. Um, it's kind of, I should know that because it's the same age as my daughter. Anyway, um, but I've been using Tableau for about 10 years. I've been training Tableau uh, here in the UK and, and also uh, worldwide as well um, for about seven or eight of those years as well. I, it's the only software tool I work on right now. So it's uh, it's my it's my baby, basically. I started off, though, as an accountant using Excel and I lived in Excel. How? And when I started working with Tableau, I just found it really enjoyable the way we can actually answer questions very visually and we can analytically dive into our data really, really quickly without having to think about how to, how to structure that data, which is why I've kind of ended up where I am right now. What I'm going to talk to you about really comes from my training. So I just want to position where we are within that process. Um, I talk about building powerful dashboards and there's lots of different ways to think about the type of dashboard you want to deliver. I, I like the simplicity of the term powerful dashboard. What it really means is that there are three eases. We want them to be easy to understand for our end users. We want them to be easy to use for our end users. And for us, we want them to be easy to build, not only so we can get there quicker, but also so that we can hand over that maintenance of our dashboards as well in a more thorough way. If it's too complex, it's hard for other people to take on board, which means you're stuck in that chair and everybody's pinging you over and out again saying, can you add this and can you add that? You don't really want to be in that scenario yourself. What I found, though, it stops professionals from getting to building powerful dashboards are three key areas. The first one is deadline pressure. You're too busy to do stuff. Information overload. There's way too much stuff out there. Where do I need to look? And also, is what I'm producing as good as everybody else's? So you've got design concerns in what you're doing. What we want to do is replace that with a turbocharged build process. 
We want to make sure that we're only learning what we need to know to deliver the project we're actually working on right now through fast track learning. And we also want to make sure that we have quality confidence in what we're actually delivering. And each of those three pillars has got three modules in it. So we have a proven process. We have a scope agreement process. We want to look at selecting templates, which are going to deliver the job once we've agreed what that scope is. And then we want to understand how to get our data ready for that project, make sure we're picking the right and building great charts for it. Uh, and, and, and the end product, of course, is an interactive dashboard that people can use and get their insights and deliver action from. We want to make sure that best practice is being applied. We want to get that peer reviewed by people so that we're actually producing something for our stakeholders, which is quality. And lastly, a uh, minimum viable, uh, viable product is delivered as quickly as possible to our end users because the feedback we get from a working product is far more valuable to us than spending a lot of time building something which is perfect, which isn't actually going to fit the job. So the idea is that we squeeze that process up and we iterate as you can imagine, as quickly as possible, fail as quickly as you possibly can, but also think about that after delivery process, you know, making sure you're getting the feedback and you're then iterating and either improving the current product or building a new one, which is filling the gaps for those particular needs. So today though, of course, we're not gonna go through all of that process. We're just gonna be looking at one of those nine modules in templates selected, but there are actually three different levels of template which I would recommend you think about using. The first one would be calculation templates. We're not going to go into that right now. That's part one though. Um, there's a link there that might be useful, for example, using Luke Stanker's calculation cheat sheet, which is uh, available on Tableau Public. The idea being, what's the point in rebuilding the same old calculations over and over again? Let's have a library and think about how we can apply that to different data sources. The third one is looking at dashboard templates. Um, and the one of the areas which I talk about a lot is the International Business Communication Standards, which talks about um, a standardized approach for delivering analytics. Lots and lots of benefits there. One of the things that we overlook, though, is that there's a massive benefit to our end user of having familiarity of what certain things mean so that they don't have to try and look around and understand what the dashboard is. So templates are a great way to do that at the chart level, but also at the dashboard level as well. We're not going to go into that in any more detail because what we're going to talk about today is charting. And that includes tables, by the way. What we find when we connect through to a brand new data set or indeed any particular data set we're familiar with, but with a specific set of questions we want to answer, is that we need to start by building up statistics and understand that data set, understand the problems in that data and understand the opportunities and the structure of that data. And then eventually we get to a point where we understand it enough and we've built things that are working and then we want to start analyzing our information to draw out the insights, whether it be for an ad hoc process or whether it be for a repeatable one. And if we're needing to do that for a repeatable one, that means we need to understand that data and how it changes and evolves over time so that we can pull out the insights automatically to deliver to our end users. The problem we find though, is that we spend way too much of our time in the red area and not in the green area, which is where we're really delivering our value. And that's where chart templates can really come in, is that we can jump to the analysis a lot quicker so that we can actually add more value uh, for the ad hoc work, but also for the ongoing work as well. There's a couple of key points to consider in that process. First one is keep it simple. User beware, make sure that we're not over glorifying charts and making it too complicated for our end users. We want to make sure that we're keeping it about the insights and delivering those insights and not misleading our end users. And we want to make sure that we're getting the data mapping right. That's actually the key part of using somebody else's chart or a chart template is making sure we're getting that data mapping process. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go into demo mode always risky, especially when you're working on a computer, something's going to go wrong. Let's just assume it does. And I'll make sure I fix it along, along the way. But what I'm going to do is give you a checklist of a prioritized set of things that you can go through whenever you're going to use somebody else's chart um, so that you can get there as quickly as possible. Okay. So I think there's a, a link here for a couple of things. Um, we're only going to use the top one in this particular demonstration. So I've done this demonstration to a healthcare user group recently. Um, but the top one is 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 a is a brilliant one. It's um, 
Donna Coles created a Workout Wednesday uh, challenge, which is around toggling selections. And I'm going to show that to you and I'll talk you through that. There's a reference there if you want to download that and steal that like an artist yourself. Um, but I would also recommend looking at a lot of the Workout Wednesday uh, solution guides and solutions themselves because there's some there's some great charts there that you can actually uh, steal like an artist. In fact, in this case, we're going to be stealing three charts. So when I talk about charts, it's just the individual charts, but we're pulling them together to make an analytical product and then apply that to our own data. So let me go into out of Keynote and into um, Tableau. So first things first, let's look at what we've got so far. As an analyst, I'm analyzing my data. Now, I struggled to find a good Norwegian data set on this particular topic. Topic. It's probably because there's not enough of it going on in Norway, but there's plenty of it in the UK because the data set I'm looking at is crime data. OK, so we have here Metropolitan Police Services and uh, other police services throughout the United Kingdom. And the heat map we're seeing at the top there is um, where crime is taking place. And there's a whole bunch of different crime types that we're looking to analyze. And this is quite a big data set. So we're actually visualizing about 360,000 data points in that map at the moment. I had to filter it down to just one month. So yes, that's 362,000 crimes in one month across in England and Wales. We don't even have in Scotland or Northern Ireland in this data. Um, so don't tell me Tableau can't visualize lots of data points. It can. So we've got this wonderful thing down the bottom. I don't know whether you recognize this, but this is actually fresh out of the stables as of yesterday. This is the tables visualization. I thought I'd knock this up for you last night because I was a bit bored. Um, but it's very simple. It's a uh, viz extension called the Tableau table. It's created by Tableau. You can see here that it's very simple to pull together. We've just got a few measures we've thrown in there. We've got the dimension that we're reporting by. And then we've got the ability to integrate different ways to bring that data in. If I wanted to, I could bring in, uh, let's bring in just extract into here as well. You can see, hey ho, another column just appears. We can change it. We can change the width of that independently. We can apply a filter to that across the whole table. We can then format this. So this is really quite a neat little Viz extension. Um, and it just fits in nicely with the rest of our dashboard. Um, it is version one, so it's gonna be a little bit frayed around the edges, of course. I'm not gonna um, put it down for that because as soon as you get something out in the wild, of course, things get better. So you'll see we've got data bars. They're really easy to do. Let me show you that. We're just gonna format that. And you can see we've got three different ways to do it. One is through text. One is through, that's column formatting, so that's the wrong thing. Um, there we go. We've got formatting type. I can do text, data bars, or color scale. I haven't got text in this uh, particular table, but that's a color scale, and we can play around with it. So really what I'm saying here is how many crimes are there per officer? And if it's below two, yay, not a problem at all. If it's above five, hmm, a bit, bit sticky. So we can see um, what's going on here. That's all very well and good. Um, and I've built that very simple dashboard up. But what I want to do is now use Donna Cole's um, toggle capability. Let's just have a very quick look to see what that is. You can see here, Workout Wednesday, week seven this year. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got the top five states um, in the US, uh, we're looking at their sales. We've then got a, a line chart on the right hand side, and we can see that there's a running total building up for the top five states. Now, what Donna built here is the ability for us to just toggle on and off whether or not we're showing these things in the line chart on the right hand side. So I can uh, take off California if I wanted to. I could take off New York, for example. And you'll notice um, that we're still seeing, oh, that, that's something not quite working with this. So let me just. Uh, Go over to this one here. And uh, when did I break this? C state is not included. So let's go back here. C state is not included. We'll get that one in there as well. We'll just put that on to true. Click on OK. Um, it's not an issue. We're not going to worry about this. I said something would go wrong, didn't I? It doesn't really matter. Um, there's there's something else funky that's supposed to be going on with those bar charts. But you can see what's actually happening is I'm able to select 
multiple items. Now, what's interesting about the solution for this is that it's actually using parameter actions as opposed to set actions. Um, and we're doing that in a rather clever way, which is relatively complex to do. So I don't want to have to rebuild that on my data. That's the point. I've got a data product here, which is looking at U EU Superstore, Superstore data, of course. I want to now apply this to my own data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the first step in this is just to copy that dashboard. So let's copy that dashboard and go back to my analysis and I'm going to paste that dashboard. Now, of course, Tableau just brings that dashboard in. It also brings in the data sets and all the worksheets. So we can see here, we've got the orders sample superstore data set now has come through. My UK crime data is already there. What I'm going to do in a moment is I'm just going to step through the numerous points I need to go through to get that working properly on my data. So the first thing I do is I hide everything that is not relevant. So I'm going to hide all the unused fields because there's a load of fields in this data set and there's normally lots of fields in a template that you're stealing from somebody else. And a lot of it is not even relevant to the charts we need to borrow. So if I hide those fields, it reduces the amount of complexity quite significantly. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this orders data, uh, data source with my UK crime one. So I can right click on there and I can replace the data source. Um, what's going to happen, of course, is we're going to get loads of errors and we're just going to go through in order the quickest way to fix those problems. So, hey, presto, a couple of types of things going on. Let's get me out of the way because I'm ugly. Um, we see these red exclamation marks in our data pane on the left hand side. I categorize those in two different ways. If you look, you can see this one, for example, is a data source field called sales, which no longer exists. So it used to be in my template data source. And when I've brought it over, it doesn't exist in my real data source. So we're going to replace references to that in a moment. Then we have other ones which are calculated fields. So those calculated fields effectively are broken because they're trying to reference things probably that don't exist anymore. So the first thing to think about is the order. Well, I'm definitely going to fix the data source problems first, okay? Rather than the calculated fields, because you find quite often the calculated fields fix themselves as we go through this process. Then we've also got red pills on our visualizations themselves. And are clearly that's trying to bring in things which don't exist. Error, the calculation C is invalid. Uh, the state province pill is doesn't exist. OK, we're also going to find potentially things like ad hoc calculations, which have been put onto a chart. Now, if you're going to build your own template library, I would recommend that you don't leave ad hoc calculations in there. You bring those into the data source pane, give them a nice name and we can fix them in the data pane. But you can go through and fix those <coughs> manually if that's not a possibility. The order, though, at the starting point, I find is critical. And I found this out with a little bit of pain from not doing it right myself. So if you can look at this particular worksheet, you can see we've got a sort order on state of province. And in fact, we've also got a top five filter on state province. It doesn't matter that it's on the same pill. The fact is, both of those pills are referencing a measure. And if I were to replace references to state province before replacing the measure, Tableau is going to say, look, there's a calculation going on on this replace pill, which is referencing something which doesn't exist. I'm going to remove it. And what that means is the filter will disappear in this case. And in this case, the sort order would just disappear. The, uh, the pill will be replaced with a new one. And that's painful and it takes a lot of time. So what I found is if you replace all measures first, you don't run into that problem. So let's do that. Let's replace our sales. Now, what are we going to replace it with? Well, actually, I want to use in my um, presentations, I've been using the extract count. So I was a bit lazy when I made this uh, particular data source, didn't give it a proper name. But as you will recognize, that's basically our relationship count based upon the table that's been used. Now we could replace sales with extract. And it kind of fixes the problem over here. But if I go over to some of my other charts, you'll notice 
we're now trying to sum something which you can't sum. So that's a bit of a problem. So I'm going to undo that replace. And instead of doing that first, I'm going to create a new calculated field using my new Mac shortcut, Control C. Woo! Uh, look at my LinkedIn post today to see what I'm talking about. Um, and we're going to call that uh, cases. And I'm going to use the old, good old favorite of one there, which is what we used to have in the good old days. And that's now a calculated field, which is just going to look at every single record and give it a one so we can sum that more easily. And now I can replace sales references with my cases instead of the extract count. And that fixes everything that we needed to. So let's go back to my bar. You can see some of cases is now working fine. So we've only got a few other problems now. Now I said we want to fix the, the measures first, uh, which are pointing at the data source. Now we want to fix the dimensions, which are pointing at the data source. So we ignore any calculated fields. Moving from the bottom up, I see state province. Now I obviously know the data source I'm mapping this to. That's key. a key thing you're going to want to do at the beginning of your process is to think about which fields you want to replace with which. I've already predetermined I want to replace state province with my crime type. So I'm going to right click state province and I'm going to switch it to crime type and click on OK. And there's a lot of things that are working already out of the box. So we can see now that I've got violence and sexual offences instead of California. Pretty much the same thing in my books. Um, then we've got antisocial behaviour, et cetera, et cetera. So we're already looking at our top five um, crime types in our data set. We've got a red bar over here because it's somewhere something is looking at order date. Remember, I removed everything that wasn't being used, so we must be referencing it somewhere. There it is. It's still a problem. It's a data source field, so we're going to right click on there and just replace references to the um, date field, which in my case is actually called month, even though it's got years in there, and my line chart is now working. So we can go back to Donna's original dashboard and everything looks to be working quite well. My labels are a little bit bigger, so obviously I'm going to have to go back in. I'm going to have to fix a few things. Um, I could just do that very quickly right now. So let's just go to my label here and you'll notice that we've got uh, dual axis going on, which is the reason why or the how Donna's created the ability to uh, put the labels above the bars, which is really useful when the label is longer than the bar. It looks quite nice. Um, again, this is something we don't need, really need to worry about how she's done that. The only thing I need to do is to maybe reduce the size of those labels so they're not so clunky on my dashboard. Go back to my dashboard. Um, and now I just need to bring in my other stuff, right? So the default size for this dashboard is too small. I'm going to temporarily just bring in a horizontal container in here. I'm now going to change the size of this dashboard. Uh, so I can bring in my other items. And remember I said part three was about dashboard templates. I'm not using a dashboard template. Normally I would, of course, I'll be bringing all of these components into that one template. But in this case, I'm just going to bring on my stuff. I'm going to bring in my map. And I'm going to bring in alongside that my table. And it takes a little bit of time to refresh. Poor old uh, visit extension. And now we get to where we were. Now there's a parameter that's appeared up here. And that's because I put a parameter on the top um, tables, uh, sorry, police forces that we wanted to be looking at. And of course, I could now turn this into a filter. And that's going to filter across not only my map, but it's also going to filter across uh, my line chart as well as my bar chart as well. And likewise, I could go through and I could actually filter from the crime type through to the rest of the uh, dashboard as well. So those are very quick and easy steps that we've gone through to take this relatively simple template and apply it to our own data. But it would have taken me a lot longer if I'd needed to build out this capability, which I really enjoy, by the way. I like this capability. The single press is working beautifully. Don't have to think about how that's done. I know how it's done, but you can learn from other people's work when you're stealing like an artist, which is great because you, 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 you've got the ability to produce something quick and analytical, which works for you. And then maybe you can spend a bit of time working out how that's been done as well.
Okay, so before I go back to the presentation, I don't know whether it's possible, uh, Tor, for you to give me any questions from the from the crew. Are there any questions in the um, chat or from your pizza eating friends? Just, yeah, there was a question about where do you find templates or where, where should you search? Good, good, uh, good, good, good question. The obvious place, of course, is is were uh, uh, public. public. But if you do you want to put yourself on mute for a little bit? Because I hear an echo. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the um, there was a comment that the Tableau public is really big, but I, I've seen that if you search for template as well that's yeah. that's a nice starting point and also the one you showed uh, from uh, work at wednesday or any of the community um, projects yeah ex exactly i was going to say that so if you search for template on tableau public unfortunately you might have heard of a couple of guys called the Flalage twins and they seem to have kind of um copyrighted the term template on on tableau public so you see a lot of their visits coming up and that many of them are actually sankey templates um so it's a little bit wary of using the word template you can also think about what it is you're trying to do so for example you might want to be building key performance indicator cards so if you search for kpis you will see a lot of good stuff on there uh, for KPI cards. Likewise, if you're thinking of about a particular chart, then obviously that search term on there. But my recommendation, if you're looking for data products like the one I've used from Donna, is to go through to the Workout Wednesday website itself. Have a look at they've you know they've been doing it for what four or five years now. There's lots of stuff. Work backwards, obviously, because the, the the later ones are using the later functionality. Um, but there's some really good stuff in there. For sure. I think there was another question here as well, Steve. Yeah. The copying of another dashboard, uh, how does that affect data sources? Do I have to have access to the data source or will Tableau just snapshot kind of a dump? Of if you're use? copying from, that's one of the good things about Tableau Public, of course, is that they must have actually brought the data source into the workbook itself. So you automatically, if you can download the workbook, you've automatically got their data and then the first step is to get off their data onto your own data anyway. Yeah, and also if you are working on published data sources, yes. and you copy paste, it brings the published data source, or even it's a live one, but you need to have yeah. access, of course, to the underlying data source if it's if it's a prompt for, for a login, or if you don't have access to the Snowflake or a SQL Server in the background. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, if you're, if you're on a server or a cloud environment, uh, again, you're you're going to be connecting to data sources that you would have access to. Otherwise, you wouldn't have access to the dashboard. So, so if you need to do a, I, I work with clients on this basis. What they sometimes do is they'll just do a, a partial extract, a random extract to make it a nice small size, but also to keep the data anonymous. Um, and then they'll then pass that to me, and I can then put that over to a template. So there there are normally ways around it when uh, you don't have access to the data itself. Let me um, go back to my presentation. Yeah, no more, no more questions so far. Norwegians are very shy. I can't see you. There's no need to be shy. <laughs> uh, I will give you the slides, of course, after this. Um, Sorry, Gabriela, uh, could you repeat? There was a question. Data. Is there a way to put somewhere out? This is the data I want to make a good. Um, template or charts on based on this any suggestions and um, anonymized data yeah steve um did you get the question sorry no, I'm not, i fully understood that question actually I, I thought if you would like to create a template but on an, anonymized data oh I okay the data i just need suggestions what are my options instead of so turning everything around I give the data, yeah. give me the suggestion how this can look instead of the... That, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. Yeah. And I think there's a couple of places I would recommend. I mean, typically, 
you don't start with the data to answer that question. You start with your objectives and the questions that you're trying to answer, of course. So bearing in mind that you might think about um, what type of questions you're trying to answer and how do you visualize the answer, then the visual vocabulary is, is a go-to example, isn't it? There are quite a few templates, again, on uh, mostly on Tableau Public, which you would turn to to get ideas for what ways to analyze the data. So if you go to Tableau Public and you search for visual vocabulary, you'll see that there are nine different categories of questions. And within each category of question, uh, you'll see up to nine or 12 different chart types that you might be thinking about using. That would be one approach. There are other chart uh, selection processes out there as well, beyond the FT uh, visual vocabulary. But there's also another great place, which is ChatGPT. So there are actually some GPTs which can help you think about the best way to visualize data. And you can even pass them your data structure to come up with suggested ways, two, three suggested ways to visualize that data as well. Isn't Einstein supposed to help with this in one of the next versions? Einstein is really good for coming up with suggestions um, on a one or two dimensional basis. So, Yes, you can absolutely say, okay, I want to ask X, Y, Z. And, and, and Einstein, which is part of Tableau Plus, is going to give you a worksheet, which is going to allow you to then edit and modify and adapt that. So that's a great tool as well. Um, Workout Wednesday examples are kind of go a couple of steps beyond that already because they're already analytical data products, aren't they? The one I showed you just now actually had three worksheets in it. Einstein's only going to ever do with one at the moment. Not going to give you a full end. Um, Thank you. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cool. Tor, you've gone on mute, so I'm guessing. Yeah, thank you. Cool. We can have some more questions at the end if you want as well. So um, I did do this presentation previously under a different name, not this presentation. Sorry, I used this presentation slides uh tool will recognize this i did this presentation uh it was called uh, i want it that way and that was a dash bait, dashboard template um focus and hence your take that away or relighting your fire the three key things i would say is try not to reinvent the wheel we don't do that in other parts of our life but we tend to do that in tableau a little bit more often for some reason um, and therefore as we just discussed try and find somewhere where you can steal like an artist um, and, and use that as a jump start into your end product to get the results that your users are looking for. And don't forget the three easies: easy to understand, easy to use, and easy to build. Key focus for you. Here's the checklist I re referred to earlier on. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna give the slides away. Um, so you can have these if you're really urgent. We, you can have a QR code and you can pin me on LinkedIn as well and I'll get them over to you. Um, but let's just go through the order of uh, as I went through them. So first of all, we created our new data. So I'd done that before we came into the presentation. So I, I got the UK crime data. I created my data source. I've then found the template that I want to map to, and, and I need to understand the fields I'm going to map to. So document the field mapping um, at the beginning of this whole process. Then, as I showed you, we just copy pasted that original template, which brings across the, the worksheets and the data sources. And then I hid the unused fields in the template data source. So we only need to focus on the ones which we need to change. Uh, I don't have any face. So then we replace that data source. And then I fix the measures, first of all. And I fix the dimensions. And possibly we need to fix any ad hoc calculations which you're referring to fields which haven't been fixed now i did then say as an aside if you're building a template internally for your use for you and your colleagues um then it's a good idea to not have those ad hoc calculations in or any way in the first place to fix that aspect in the templates wherever you can there are a couple of other things which i didn't need to go through in the example because we just didn't have enough time but i'm going to mention them to you now because now's the time for you to fix any hard coded issues and again, if you can fix that in the template and hard coded issues, we'll see in a moment. A lot of the time, it's just because we're lazy. Uh, other times, no, you have no way of overcoming it. So where might we see hard coded 
values. Firstly, if you think about the filter, if there is a filter on a worksheet, which is, let's say, state was filtering out California, quite clearly when I replace state with crime type, there is no California in crime type. And so that filter will break. So you need to identify that within the templates themselves before you switch it over so you know what's going on. Possibly parameters, of course. So you may find that there's a list within the parameters pointing to a field directly or just containing values which are no longer relevant in your data. So you need to think about how you're going to fix those problems. And then you probably, possibly also have hard coding in calculated fields where, for example, you might be sum if state equals California, etc., etc. So you need to find where those potential issues may be for you as well. So you can document those and address them later. Other things which can sometimes go wrong is um, if we're switching from one dimension to another and that uh, original dimension was uh, a bit shapes, for example, sometimes that switch over defaults it back to the default shape. So you have to go back and fix the, the shape allocation, which typically would make sense anyway, a lot of the time, um, because you're going to want to have to think about what the shapes need to be. And likewise, you sometimes get the same issue, issue with colors. So I was using default color palette there, so it didn't make any difference for me. Um, and, and it just means that you need to go back in and reapply the colors based upon the way you want to apply those. Um, and then lastly, close your unused DS and move on, eat some more pizza and have some more beer. That's uh, the checklist, which uh, I found quite useful to, uh, to go through in that order. Here's a challenge to you. Take action and actually learn something from this and take away. So you could yourself take Donna Cole's workout Wednesday, uh, week seven, and apply it to your own data. It's a great little tool to have. And you can start modifying and adapting it and making it bigger and better for you as well. You could also choose another workout Wednesday. And I'm just going to give you three, which I think were pretty cool. Week three, four and five this year, all of which could be adapted to pretty much anybody's data sets. Very useful uh, workout Wednesday challenges. And again, there are great learning points for you to do that reverse engineering approach after you've actually applied it to your own data. And then still like an artist, and after you've done that, apply best visual practices, because sometimes when you're combining lots of things together, of course, you still need to then do a once over to make sure that you're not breaking any good visual best practices as well. You could take that further and say, well, what are you going to do next? Uh, sorry, that's a, a slide for my community where obviously they can post it into our Slack community and get feedback from everybody in the group. Other next steps after this could well be to explore your environment within your Tableau server to identify potential template opportunities. So there are probably hundreds of dashboards out there, some of which could be reused more often than they probably are at the moment as a starting point. Um, you could also then, as we talked earlier on, have a look on Tableau Public for those template opportunities as well. Um, and then see if you can actually identify your next project and see if you could apply some sort of chart template in there to speed up your development process. That would be my recommendation. And lastly, perhaps identify, let's move me out of the way, whee, let's identify and enhance some old project that either you have done or you've inherited or something is on your server that could be enhanced and improved by applying a template that you've seen out of the, uh, the ones I've shown you today or the ones that you identify elsewhere. That's me trying to encourage you to get some value out of this presentation. I hope it's not too patronizing. If you want to get in contact with me, there I am. Uh, I think that's a QR code that might work. I'd love somebody to actually take a quick copy of that and see if they can access me on LinkedIn because I did that a long time ago. I'm not sure how long they last. Um, but feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn uh, and ping me if you're interested in getting other assets from me from this presentation. Uh, let me know as well. I'll probably be able to post something up on Tableau Public before the, uh, the video goes live as well. And in the presentation, here are some other assets that you could use for seeming like an artist. Um, we've got the Luke Stanker calculations. We've got Klaus and Rosario's um, Tableau Public Finance for Professionals collaboration, which is a whole bunch of P&Ls, profit and loss accounts, which you can apply. 
Uh, I'm an ex-accountant and I find that fascinating stuff. I've worked with Rosario and Klaus um, partially on that as well because there are peculiarities about finance and the, they overcome a lot of those in that. I mentioned Jeff Platner's dashboard templates here as well, as well as maybe picking up one of the KPI examples, which is using Andy Kriebel's social media dashboard where he's got one set of charts in there, which can be very easily applied for key performance indicator cards. But of course, continue to look for the infinite inspiration for many, many people in the data firm itself. That is the end. I've overrun by a minute. I do apologize, Tor. Yeah, I'm back in again, so maybe there's some echo now. Let us check if there's any, yeah. It's, it's okay now, so there's nothing, no no more echoes. Thank you. Any questions from from Norway? Yeah, there's a question. Yeah, there's a more performance question. When you hide unused uh, fields, is there any performance difference from not bringing them in in the first place? Well, to be honest, it's only well, a to be honest, it's because we're hiding them just to clean up what we're replacing um, and by the time I've switched over and closed down the old data source then they're no longer an issue if you're thinking about the performance within your end product um, there can be a good performance uh, approach because you're hiding them and actually removing them from the temporary queries as well then so there is an option to improve performance it's definitely improved performance if you're then creating an extract because uh, those Columns do not end up in the extract either, so that can improve performance that way as well. You're on mute. I know, but I was checking if there was some, some questions, but not now. There was a link for a workout with me, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you go to, to, to oh. community projects as well, you'll okay. find Thank you, Steve. Good to see that the computer didn't break down and get a blue screen. Or you have a Mac, though. But uh, good that you finally found the shortcut key shortcut for uh, for uh, open the control the calculation window. I know. I had to make uh, it, to make the shortcut, but it's easy. So easy. It's unbelievable. Well, if you use a Windows computer, then there's already a shortcut. So your loss. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll buy you a beer. I'll buy you a beer in London in uh, in a month. Or less I'm looking month. forward to seeing I'm you. I'm hopefully seeing see you. Both you guys from Norway as well. From Norway as well. Yeah. At least one up there, maybe some more. We'll see. Thank you, Steve. My We're pleasure. switching over now to, to a local presentation that would be in Norwegian. So, okay. For those of you who are okay. online who don't understand Norwegian, you can probably look at the uh, uh, screenshots, but it will be in Norwegian. So on that basis, I'll say thank you, everybody, and uh, have a good e uh, session, remaining session. See you. Bye. Bye. So we're going to take a short break and first set up an OSC on uh, non four minute.
So? Dann hat er noch mal was gesagt. Ja, klar. Bra. Jeg våkner. Jeg våkner til. Men det er så lyset. Rett i pjesen. Ja, jeg ble spurt om å snakke litt om hvordan vi i retriver bruker tablået. Jeg vet ikke om noe, fordi du synes at det var veldig interessant. Jeg låner mest fordi at jeg har spurt Tor om veldig mange spørsmål på LinkedIn. Så han tenkte sånn, nå er det på tide at jeg bidrar litt tilbake. Og holder et litt innlegg her. Jeg tenkte... Nei, nå gikk det ikke an. Ok. Ah, ok. Der er vi. Denne innholdsfortegnelsen lagde jeg før jeg lagde presentasjonen, så jeg vet ikke om dette stemmer lenger. Vi hopper videre. Jeg tenkte først bare å fortelle kort om retriver, for det er at jeg synes når jeg forteller folk at jeg jobber i retriver, så sier de aller fleste sånn, å, det har jeg aldri hørt om. Og resten sier sånn, å ja, vi får noen sånn e-postvarslinger hver morgen. Jobber du med å sende ut de e-postvarslene? Er det jobben din? Og det er ikke jobben min. For vi driver først og fremst, altså vi driver med medieovervåkning og medieanalyse. To fikbiller, disse e-postvarslene, som er sånn, hvis noen av dere har hørt om oss, så er det de e-postvarslene dere sikkert kjenner til. Men vi driver med medieovervåkning og medieanalyse. Vi har Nordens største arkiv, så vi følger med på alle, altså alt av aviser på nett og papir og TV og radio på Avin. Vi eies av NTB og TT, og har kontorer i alle nordiske land. Så vi driver, ja, som sagt, overvåker medier, lager rapporter av hva mediene skriver om, hvordan det er vinklet, og hvordan det oppfattes av lesere, og... Så de fleste kundene våre er jo ulike bedrifter, offentlige, private, ideelle virksomheter som bestiller analyse av hvordan de fremstår i mediebildet, både i redaksjonelle og sosiale medier. Jeg tok med en liten skryteslide, for vi gjør veldig mye forskjellig. Vi lager analyser av hvordan det meste er fremstilt i mediene. For eksempel Baneheia-saken er jo fremstilt på diskuterbare måter, som vi har laget en rapport om. Ja, mye forskjellig. Og så kort om meg, for det er at jeg har kanskje snublet litt inn i dette med tablået. Jeg er egentlig medieviter, og har jobbet som medieanalytiker i Retriever lenge. Men, så... Vi hadde en dataanalytiker, men så plutselig fikk vi veldig mange dashboard-kunder, og så var det behov for at en til lærte seg tablået. Og da fikk jeg begynne å jobbe 50 prosent med tablået, fordi at jeg kunne ingenting om tablået, men jeg visste hva kundene våre ville ha ut av produktet. Og så kjente jeg jo analysesystemet vårt godt. Så det begynte med for halve annet år siden, og så nå har jeg jobbet et halvt år. 100 prosent med tabler. Og hvordan jobber vi med dataanalyse i Retriever? Vi begynte egentlig med tabler fordi at kundene var rett og spurte det. Ikke kanskje tabler spesifikt, men alt som tabler leverer. Med tabler så kan vi vise mye mer data på en gang enn det vi kunne før. Før leverte vi bare medianalyser i PowerPoint eller PDF eller Word eller andre satte formater som du ikke kan klikke deg rundt i på samme måte. Så det er det ene. Vi kan levere mye mer data, og så kan vi levere data i samtid, rett fra arkivet vårt og ut til kundene. Og spesielt var det veldig mange som meldte interesse under koronapandemien. Alle helseforetakene lurte jo på hvordan deres mediebildet så ut. Og vi hadde mange helseforetakskunder. Den ene som jeg var analytiker for, husker jeg, gikk fra 8 000 oppslag i året til 22 000 oppslag. Så det var jo et enormt vekst der, og de hadde jo behov for å se hvordan de hadde kommunisert den siste uken løpende, hvor mange spørsmål de har fått, hvor trykket er størst i landet, og så videre. Så det som kanskje er litt spesielt med måten vi bruker tabler på, er at vi har tre ulike maler. 
likte veldig godt den forrige presentasjonen her. Vi også tenker litt sånn, det er ikke mitt vits å finne opp hjulet hver gang. Det er tre... Ja, tre ulike dashboards som en kunde kan på en måte velge tre ulike nivåer, og så jobbe ut derfra. Så det vi viser i tablå er data rett fra vårt arkiv, altså A-tekst. Og så har vi også et sosiale medierarkiv, og så er det diverse andre datakjeller. Legg en liten... Prøv å visualisere. Vi henter ut dette fra mediearkiv via MariaDB og til Tablå. Så her er det live oppdateringer til serveren, og så henter vi ut ekstrakter med jævlig mellomrom. Ja, arkivet er koblet opp med SQL-kalkulasjoner. Før var det på en annen måte. Det vet ikke jeg så mye om. Det vet Jan som er med er produkteier på andre viser, så han vet egentlig mye mer om tabloer enn meg. Men jeg presenterer dette likevel. Dette er sånn medie. Altså analysesystemet vårt ser ut, så det er en artikkel som kommer inn i arkivet, som vi kategoriserer etter ulike variabler, altså hvilket tema handler om tallene om, hvilket talspersoner uttaler seg, og alt dette vises som ulike tabeller i tabloet. En kalkulasjon for den hoved, all metadata som kommer ut automatisk, og så lager vi en kalkulasjon for hver av variablene. Så har vi også Excel og sosiale mediearkiv. Da kjenner jeg allerede at dette trenger ikke gå så dypt inn på. Men her er de tre typene dashboard vi har. Det første er veldig enkelt, det er helt kvantitativt, og så er det kvalitativt, og så er det ingen begrensninger på det siste. Det første dashboardet som kundene våre har, det er som regel bare disse to fanene her. Det viser kvantitativ data over mediedekningen din, altså hvor mange oppslag er du nevnt i, hvilket potensielt publikum, hvilke skilder, alt det som vi kan hente ut rett fra arkivet, metadataen som ligger klart, hvilke fylker er du nevnt i, kvantitativ data. Og dette kan du jo få i samtid, så du kan gå inn og se hvor ofte vi omtalte siste døgnet. Det andre, og det som kanskje er mest populært, er et mer kvalitativt dashboard, der en analytiker går inn og leser alle omtalen, vurderer på ulike variabler. Her får du da med talsperson, tema, alle mulige, mye mer innsikt av dataen. Så dette sier mye mer om hvordan publikum oppfatter analyseobjektet. Og det siste er her et bilde av alle de ulike eller workboxene som er inne i. Det kan være utrolig mange av det som regel både en blanding mellom redaksjonelle og sosiale medier og alle andre skilder. Så det er på en måte tre typer dashboard vi alltid går ut fra. Og selvfølgelig prøver vi å tilpasse der vi kan, og det enkleste der er jo med parametre om kunden har lyst til å se bare en spesiell del av datasettet, så er det jo lett å filtrere her. Har du lyst til å bare se hvor vi omtaler i riksmedier, bare kortmeldinger eller ikke kortmeldinger, hvilke fylker vi omtalte i, og så pleier vi å ha med et sånt parameter som viser hvilken målenhet du kan se all dataen i. Og her ser vi den første tendenskaken. En kunde fordelt på antall oppslag. Da ser vi for eksempel at 4 prosent av antall oppslag er negativt. Men når vi filtrerer på Facebook-engasjement, altså hva som engasjerer mest på Facebook, da ser vi at den negative omtalen får mye større andel. Eller mye større, men jo, en del større. Mens det ikke er like populært å snakke om de positive sakene på Facebook. Så det er jo et ordentlig sånn plassbesparende elementer, at du kan ha en graf, og så kan du forvandle den på mange måter. De utfordringene vi hadde før tablå har jeg også vidt nevnt, men det er det med at kundene får mye mer begrenset innsikt i dataen. Dette er en type slides vi kunne levere 
Eh, og vi gjør jo det fortsatt også, men det er en litt annen type leveranse. Eh, for det første må man litt velge ut akkurat hvilke grafer vi skal levere den måneden. Og det er det de får, og de får ikke noe mer enn det. Eh, og så kan du jo ikke se hvilken data som ligger bak disse grafene. Sånn som jeg ser, man, det er kjempemasse positiv omtale i, i uke 15, men ingen vet hvilke artikler det var snakk om. Så de var mye mer avhengige av at analytikeren forklarte hver graf. Hva ligger bak her? Sånn som her kan du se akkurat en graf, men du kan ikke se hvilke medier ligger innenfor disse, hvilke positive artikler finnes innenfor de ulike kildene. Og så ser vi bare at det er topp 15 kilder, for da er det selvfølgelig et begrenset plass på en powerpoint. Men det har man jo ikke i tablået. Dette burde kanskje vist i tablået, ikke på en powerpoint, men når jeg har tatt noen screenshots, som dere vet, så kan man jo klikke seg inn på alt mulig her, og så filtreres alt annet. Så det er jo mye enklere for kundene våre å finne frem til akkurat det de vil. Og vi kan scrolle og scrolle for alle kildene, og et mye mer komplett um, bilde. Så har vi også som regel en knapp som du kan klikke på, så viser du hele artikkelisten. Så du kan du vise alt, alle oppslag der eh, du har nevnt. Og selvfølgelig hvis du klikker på bare de negative oppslagene, så får du bare akkurat de negative oppslagene. Så kan du klikke det videre, dette er også URL der, så du kan se akkurat hva som ligger bak eh, dataen. Mm. Ja, så det er en litt annen type analyse. Og det beste er jo også om vi presenterer denne dataen. Eh, for det er, at det er jo ikke alle som er like gode til å lese grafer. Og man må ha kanskje en, et litt mer overordnet blikk her. For det at det, når det er så mange muligheter, så må man se litt sånn hva er det egentlig som er viktig denne måneden. Grafene kan se ganske like ut fra måned til måned, men det er jo ulike ting som er interessant å ta tak i hver gang. Og den andre utfordringen var um, at kundene bare får in info en gang i måneden, eller en gang i kvartalet, eller en gang i uken, eller det som de har bestilt. Men hvis det da skjer en krise midt i måneden, så må de vente 15 dager med å se hvordan håndterte vi egentlig den krisen? Kunne vi gjort noe annerledes? Um, mens nå, de som har dashboard kan jo gå inn og se umiddelbart hvor mye det er omtalt. Ja! Yeah. Kunden har de egne ting som de fortjener dem selv? Ja. Og det er jo... Nei, de ser det rett i vår portal. Så det er jo litt forskjellig. Noen har bare innlogging for kommunikasjonsavdelingen, mens noen viser det til alle i hele selskapet. Så det er litt forskjellig hvordan det brukes også. Om det er kommunikasjonsavdelingene som skal evaluere seg selv, eller om dette skal brukes litt mer sånn for å vise de høyere opp hva, ja, hvilken innsats de har lagt inn, eller... Men de kan få... Alle kan få tilgang gjennom portalen. Selve. Ja. Du får vist det du forklarte at du ikke får til. Nei, det kan godt være. Det bruker vi ikke. Ja, nå hører du om det var nemlig. Det var nemlig. Ja, som sagt, vi leverer jo analysen som vi har pleid å, å levere, men det er litt sånn verdt sitt formål. Eh, en powerpoint med mye tekst og mye analytisk innsikt kan, fun kan fungere godt for å se hva man kunne gjort annerledes, eller gi råd til kunden eller sånn. Men her kan de gå inn med en gang og se at sånn, vi får mye kritikk i dette fylket, eller skal inn til de lokalmediene denne uken. Så, Tableau har gjort analysene mer innsiktsfulle og mer tilgjengelige for kundene. Og noen av de bruker dashboardene veldig mye, men det er jo kanskje de som er best på å lese data. Det er ganske stor forskjell. Noen foretrekker selvfølgelig fortsatt å få en presentasjon en gang i måneden, og det er det uansett om de har dashboard eller ikke. Så det ser ganske stor forskjell på kundene våre, men mange liker det veldig godt. 
Så det er de vanlige kundedashboardene vi har, og så har vi også to offentlige dashboard, som er kanskje litt tilfeldig at det er vi som har, eller det er noen andre som sikkert kunne ha levert den samme dataen, for akkurat dette er faktisk ikke fra vårt arkiv. Dette er um, hvor mange stillinger på nav.no som er heltidsstillinger og deltidsstillinger. Så det gjør vi både for fagforbundet og for Delta. Um, og her har vi også selvfølgelig dynamiske dashboard der man kan gå inn og klikke seg rundt og se hvilke kommuner som har mest og minst stillinger liggende ute. Uh, og Delta har koringer på hvilke kommuner som gjør det best basert på dette dashboardet. I tillegg til det, ja. Det som er på public, bortsett fra at det kan være kommuner i min kommune. Ofte oppdaterer vi. En gang i måneden. Men det er inne og registreres en gang i døgnet. Så det er alt som legges ut, men vi oppdaterer det bare en gang i måneden. I tillegg så har vi noen dashboards som vi bare bruker internt, i hvert fall foreløpig. Når vi først har all denne dataen på alle kundene våre, hvordan de gjør det i mediebildet, så har vi samlet i sammen for å lære litt mer om mediebildet selv, og spesielt fordelt på bransje. Noen kunder som vi har hatt i mange år vet jo veldig godt hvordan de pleier å ligge, og hvis de har 10 prosent positiv omtale, så tenker de at ja, okay, det er litt mer enn forrige måned, det er litt mindre enn vi hadde i fjor, så det er jo ofte det er fint å se på seg selv tilbake i tid, men det er jo også en stor verdi å se hvordan sammenlignbare konkurrenter gjør det i mediebildet. Så da kan vi jo si at vi vet at det høres ut som om 5 prosent er litt lavt, men denne måten har faktisk bransje gjennom snittet lugget på det og det. Så det er et veldig fint verktøy for oss å bruke når vi går inn og skriver analyser. Vi hadde et Eh, verktøy for dette tidligere, men der kunne vi bare hente ut tendens, altså sentiment og synlighet for kundene. Og så drev vi og fylte inn i Excel alle andre verdier. For det at vi ville ha denne dataen, eh, spesielt til årsanalyser, så er det mange som ikke kunne ha vært til vanlig, som lurer på hvordan har vi sett ut dette året. Og da er det spesielt fint å kunne ha noe å sammenligne med. Men dette var en veldig tungvint jobb. Mens nå har vi jo alt dette klart i et dashboard, så det er mye enklere å finne fram. Og dette brukes jo sånn som jeg tror dere kan lese her, men sånn ser dere ut i mediebildet denne måneden, og sammenlignet på bransjen så legger det på sånn og sånn. Så det er nyttig internt også. Litt spørsmål, ja. jeg litt på siden av tablå, men hvordan finner du ut om man har positiv og negativ artikkel? Er det tekstanalyse, eller er det manuelt, eller? Ja, det gjøres manuelt, så vi etterstreber å ha en lesers syn på analyseobjektet. Det er en kombinasjon av tekstanalyse, innholdsanalyse, ja, ser på litt på kontekst. Og, mm. Mm. Så det skal jo være et utenforstående perspektiv. Da. Det er jo noen av kundene våre som har drevet og laget analyser selv tidligere, men vi oppdager ofte i samtaler at de oppfatter mye mer som enten veldig positivt eller veldig negativt, mens en gjennomsnittlig avisleser oppfatter kanskje ting litt annerledes. Så dette er jo et, ja, et neutralt, en neutral analyse skal det være da. Mm. Og så bruker vi disse tallene til å vi leverer disse til mediene når, både når de spør og så leverer vi det. Nå skal vi ha faktisk en et innlegg på PR og kommunikasjonsdagen til de som er interessert i å komme der. Så der kommer det, i tillegg til alt infoen som er i dashboardet, så har vi funnet fram fra, ja, et veldig stort asset sett. Um, mange forskjellige variabler innenfor mye spennende snakks. Og så tenkte jeg bare helt på slutten, for jeg tror jeg skrev på den innkallelsen. Malene gir noen tips og triks på slutten, og jeg tenkte sånn, det har jeg ikke jeg sier til jeg til. Jeg vet ikke om jeg har et eneste triks som noen av dere som er sikkert har brukt tablet mye lenger enn jeg har. Så jeg har. Hello. Jeg skal dere ha ingen triks, men så tips, og det er jo litt det samme som vi nettopp så. Det med at man kan drive og bruke mye tid på å gjøre ting 
eh, som man inte tränger att göra så tänker allt det, det bästa er och sätta av tid till det som är er viktigt lägga tid på och så finna enkla lösningar på det du inte tränger bruka tid på. Märka ofta när jag sitter din och letat att någon annan har snubblat av att sån ah jag har gjort det gärna göra det på en mer enkel måte. Och det är er ju sen sig som alla andra program som du finner bara nya ting hela tiden akkurat som om det är er Photoshop eller om det är er Excel. Vi ska när vara på jobbet och för att skriva den första gången ibland så som extra hjälp. Så jag ska analysera själv att börja med sen ja, är er du kan du Excel? Och då blir sån här gud kan du Excel. Det är er ju säkert tusen ting inte kan i Excel. Vad betyder det en gång? Jag kan ju Excel och så blir han satt och så känns sån okej, okay, kan ni i alla fall nog till att känna att det är er mer som jag inte kan. Alltså det blir aldrig färdigt utan tror jag. Och sånt som här han får datan lite grann som jag jobbat med. Han var han kunde SQL in och ut. Han skrev det utan att tänka över det. Lange kalkulationer. Um, så han skrev vi har ju ofta profilnamn alltså kun där så vi hämtar ut kundeprofiler det heter ju kanske sån kundeanalysprofil redaktionella medier ett namn som inte ser så pent ut och så vill du att i tabellen ska det bara så kundenamn så drev han och skrev såna långa kalkulationer som hvis kunden heter detta så ska det visas detta hvis den heter det så ska det visas det och det går ju helt fint an um, jeg vet ikke om dette er noe bedre, men jeg fant litt tilfeldig ut helt i starten av vinter å jobbe med dette. Så ja, da kan du bare endre alias, og da endres du overalt i stedet for å legge den nye kalkulasjonen inn der du trenger det. Så det er jo et veldig sånn, en enkel ting, men som er bare en påminnelse om at jeg tror at jeg allerede gjør noen sånne ting som jeg, sånn, jeg vet at det går an å gjøre på den måten, så jeg bare gjør det, selv om det egentlig tar litt tid, og det er sikkert mye som kan gjøres enklare. Nu som för mig av till tips nummer 2, bruk ChatGPT till det du kan av såna långa skedliga ting, skriva långa konversioner. Det kan göra så mycket enklare. Det är er ju många goda tabellresurser, men jag syns ju att ChatGPT ofta ger visst den kan svara så får du det ut med en gång. Um, och sånt som här, hur man fjärrar ner dessa linjerna, det kan du leta efter. Och då kan du kanske lära dig något nytt på vägen, men när du har dålig tid så är er det enkelt att bara spärra så får du svaret med en gång. I tillägg till att skriva konklusioner, eh, det har blivit bättre än det var för ett halvt år sedan. Men som skriver datorkonklusioner för exempel, det kunde jag klart vi hade satt mig ned och tänkt lite och så tänkt ah oh, gud hur många parenteser är er det och okay, mont och så skrivet så jag kunde kunde klart att komma fram till den när vi hade brukt några minuter på det men så blå kan göra det på ett sekund så det slår ett slag för det var min presentation en liten uppsummering är er att blå har gjort det både lättare för oss att finna data raskt eh, kryskabla data eh, vi kan få mer data i samtid det är er, ja, mycket enklare för oss och jag så är er det enklare för kunderna att få avsikt. De kan gå in och kolla när de är er intresserade av att finna data, de tränger sig vänta på oss, tränger sig sända mail och spela sån här kan vi få den analysen någon dag tidigare för de att det ska ha det till det och det. De får det hela tiden. Jag tror den kunden som har ofta så att tänka här anvär timme, men de kunde, altså, de kan få det så ofta de vill. Så det är er det. Så brukar vi ta blå i retriva. Tack för mig. Ja. 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 Jag kan sända till de som är er intresserat. Ja. 
jag ska inte ta den. Jag har stilled like an artist från väldigt mycket från för idag den lite grann. Så men vi prövar ju hela tiden att göra det lite någon ändringar här och där. Men är det är ganska pen. Så beställer du alltså då ökor på det filmen av den i basen deras och så så är det det som genererar data som dras in i den nya vi har ju någon referenskunder så vi har lov att visa till nya potentiella kunder och när vi visar lite olika dashboards så är det ofta att de nya kunderna säger så ja det som vill vi ha det och då tar bara utgångspunkt i det jag vet om det är ofta folk inom samma bransch som där datan liknar så det är egentligen bara att basera det på en annan kunde. Yes. Jag tror att du skulle få den inte kunna ta när du har delat den skärmen och ta dig, men tillvis inte. Nej. Så det var ju pinlig. Jag ser det på dig. Ja. Nu får man bara beklaga det tekniska med att det inte ting blev visst här. Klage, och så har jag heller problem med att folk skriver på chatten och chatten är här och jag sitter där. Så det ska som jag lovar till nästa gång så kommer jag inte ha det problemet. Det är Atle Atle sitt ansvar så jag skyller på han. Som vanligt då. Ja ja. Men så kan nytta det. Så vi kör får med väck den. Det ser rätt rätt ut som den har låst sig på den den som är delt där inne. Så det var dumt. Men presentation eh ja nu blev vi ju så fall vis presentationen var på videon heller då men på nettsidan eller på den BBC så kan man lägga ut den den PowerPoint men det är som en PDF jättegott. Så kan folk gå in och se på så bara kan du se på videon höra höra på videon <laughs> så kan du matcha med det då visst. Men jag chatt GPT där jeg brukar jag gå en del så. Och så finns det någon du står den betalda versionen. Så det är en som heter Adam Miko. Han har lagt massa goda sån sån specifika för tablå som är väldigt bra. Som så du ställer frågor om tablå får svar på det. Man kan laga en dataset för dig, du skulle då sån anonymiserat för exempel. Eh, hvis du har ett dashboard så kan du ta en skärmbild och putta det in i den så får du tillbaka med dig karaktärer på visuella på data på förklaring på font och text och form och färg och så vidare. Men då har du ju lite sån inte bara putta en kassa som helst för det klart lägger den i skärmbild av alltså det ja, men det är det alltså de har den betalda versionen för det som har lagt. Så har du tillgång till det. Ja. Så det kan kan jag dela för det som är intresserat. Ja, vet du Malena brukar du den Malena brukar du den vanliga chat PPT eller har du den betalt eller? Nej. Ja, en gratis version. Ja. Ja, den Ja. Den husk alltså la i den betalt så lagar den ju historiken så kan gå tillbaka igen. Och du kan ställa frågor och så får du ju, visst det inte funkar så kan du Ja. Ja, ja. ja det är en del det är en del goda funktionaliteter där. så beklagar det för er som är online men som blir det. Eh gång så fungerar allt. Men vi ses i alla fall den 20 januari. Nej, det är inte. Det kan gå till det men i alla fall den 20 november hoppas jag. Så ska sända ut den på ny. Eh så det dock som har ställt frågor eller var flinkast ställt frågor kan få gå fram och finna ut. Men Lena, jag har en fråga om Excel. Så. Så nu så
Här får du, du kommer här och presentera så får du ta med så. Du har ju presenterat för, du har inte presenterat ännu. En dem har presenterat, en av har presenterat, men ingen av som sitter här. Nei, så det er mye lett her. Dere jo presenterte jo for ikke så lenge siden. Fremtiden. Det er lenge siden noen har presentert derfra. Finn, det er enda lenge siden dere har presentert det. Så det er det som er den største utfordringen. Det er å bestille denne plassen, bestille denne pizza, det er fint, men det er å få folk til å presentere, alt er en utfordring. Så alle som har noe å presentere, vil jeg tro at det vil være interessant for alle. Samme hva nivået er på. Og det ser jeg andre jobber med, synes jeg alltid er gøy å se på din presentasjon i dag. Det er litt av hensikt med en usergruppe å dele, sant? Og så kan du gjøre sånn som du gjør at du anonymiserer og fjerner ting, sant? Det er jo... Ja, ja, det er ingen som har sett noen ting på som vi som satt her, det var litt lite, så vi så det ikke mer, altså. Det var veldig anonymt. Men det er jo en måte å gjøre det på, hvis du tenker at du ikke kan vise firma eller organisasjonsdata, så går det an å ikke vise det live, men ta skjermbeller og så fjerne noen dimensjoner eller noen tabeller eller noe. Så det vil vi gjerne ha mer av. Men nå har vi i hvert fall bokket opp dette året, så ønsker vi fire møter til neste år. Pleier å ha et i kvartalet. Prøvde oss, var det i år eller i fjor vi hadde Hansson? Det var i år. Var det i år det? Satt der der henne. Hadde vi en sånn mini makeover Monday-sak. Og det synes vi egentlig var veldig gøy, det som var der. Jeg tror jeg synes det var gøy, men vi har tenkt litt på at vi må kanskje sende ut dataen litt på forhånd, for tanken her var at alle fikk dataen, så hadde dere 45 minutter på å lage noe ting. Det er litt kort tid, men du kan gjøre veldig mye på 45 minutter da. Men kanskje vi kjører en sånn til neste år. Litt sånn hands-on. Det er nok ikke å lage opp 45 minutter da. Nei, for vi har jo lagt jo på forhånd. Vi skal bruke 45 minutter. Men det er den største utfordringen. Steve, han sa ikke noe om det i dag, men han har lagt en del poster på LinkedIn i siste andre samme. Du sitter i en dag og jobber med dataene, så bruker du en dag å lage dashboardet, så bruker du fire uker før du publiserer, for du skal fikse på sånne små ting og gjøre sånne ting som egentlig ingen bryr seg om. Og så får du aldri publisert og gått videre i livet. Så av og til så må vi gjøre det også. Men 18.30. Malene, du fikk et oppdrag i dag. Husker du det et til? Husker du det? Nei, rett. For det er normalt så har vi gått rett inn på skråplanet, men det er skråplanet som er rett her inne. Den er bare for å boke det for egne eventer og opplegg. Så sist vi som vi, det var meg og deg og et par andre meg, det er mer med, hva heter det, det som det var? Jeg husker ikke hva det var, men det var det tre minutter å gå herfra. Så kanskje man kan gå ned der igjen, på en pub. Ja, det med de fine regnbuegaten. Det var den som hadde masse øl, masse forskjellig øl. Ja. Kanskje det. Ja, jeg drikker selv, så det var veldig bra valg, men det hadde både vin og andre gode ting. Så går vi ned der, så legger jeg kort i baren, og så gir jeg beskjed når det er tomt. Takk for i dag.